Oh, it's time for another math easy solution. Today we're going to discuss uh, further into improper integrals and now go over example 7 of the example video series and go over this pretty useful and very important example on improper integrals. And I'll explain that uh, further why it's so important. Basically, uh, this example states evaluate the following integral if possible. So integral from 0 to 3 of uh, dx, uh, well, 1 divided by x minus one right here. So the first thing we should note here is, this is the very important part, yeah, it's basically that there is a vertical asymptote at x equals one. So in this interval from zero to three, if we were to just do integrated without assuming this, we'll get an answer that in fact is wrong. So that's what makes this so important to uh, realize is, is that in the middle of this interval from zero to three, we have an asymptote here because at, uh, as you, if you plug in x equals one, it goes to well one divided by zero and it goes to infinity. So the graph looks something like let me just graph it here. This is x, this is y. So yeah, if you have your axis like this, just uh, change it up to be a bit more con uh, concise. So basically add here at x equals to one. Here, this is the line x equals to one. So what we what happens here, how this graph looks like as you plug in, let's say, um, as you plug in a large number, let's say uh, 200 or whatever, one divided by 200, you're gonna get a smaller and smaller number. So it's approaching, well, to it's, it's approaching zero. You're getting close to zero, but as you go, as you plug in a number close to one, but really close uh, on the right side, you're gonna go to infinity right here because you have, well, let's say two minus one, that's one divided by, one is just going higher and higher as you get because you're getting closer and closer to zero it's going to look something like this so that's the function looks like that this is y equals one over x minus one and then on the other side as you approach x from as you approach one from the left side you're going to have the only difference is well it's going to be like for example 0 0.9 minus one that's point one a negative point one so you're just it's going to be the exact same thing but you're going to the negative side so it's going to look something like this actually where this is approaching and again it's approaching zero but from uh, when you go to the negative infinity at the bottom you're getting a smaller and smaller but again it's gonna be a negative because you have let's say negative 200 minus one is still negative and one divided by negative 200 is a small number but a negative small number getting closer to zero so this is how the function looks like and this is let's say from this is at x equals one and then here let's just say this is at three so we want to find the integral from zero all the way to three and basically that represents well the net area under the curve and our goal is to see if we can evaluate this and then so it will look something like this to see if we get either infinity or not and again it's important to always realize to see if it, this integral is an improper one or a proper integral uh, before you evaluate it because and I'll show you why later we're gonna get the wrong answer if we evaluate it without realizing that there is a vertical asymptote in between Yes, yeah, so since the vertical asymptote occurs in the middle of the interval, we need to break the integral into two parts, as in part C of the definition of type two improper integrals, which I went over in my earlier video. Basically, we just have to evaluate it from zero to one and from one to three because of this vertical asymptote. So the integral from zero to three of dx uh, divided by x minus one is the same thing as writing one over x minus one uh, dx. So this equals to the integral from zero to one of dx, yeah, basically where the asymptote occurs at one, and then plus the integral from one to three of dx x minus one. So now we can uh, separate these into two parts, and let's just solve the first one here first. So for the first integral right here, integral from zero to one, uh, recall from my earlier videos on improper fun uh, improper integrals we could write this as a limit so this is a type 2 because it's a vertical asymptote so as a limit as t approaches 1 from the left side so this ne negative means the left side so we're just looking at this integral so we're approaching 1 from the left side and that's what then and then from the right side it would be a positive so we're approaching from the left side of the integral from 0 to t 
of dx, x minus one. So we're writing this integral as a limit because of that vertical asymptote. Now, if, if we evaluate this, recall the integral of one over x minus one, that's just natural log. So this equals to limit t approaches one from the negative side, and then this is equals to natural log of the absolute value of x minus one. Yeah, and then we evaluate it from zero to t. So you can see the proof of this, of this natural log, then getting the integral of that in my earlier video. And, and you can see that in the video link below. So if we evaluate this, this equals two limit as t approaches one from the left side of now, when you just plug that in, so ln of t minus one subtracted by ln, and then we put in zero, all we're left with, well, is just negative one right here. But since we're dealing with the absolute value, this just equals two ln of, well, one. So the absolute value of negative one is just one, and the ln of one is just zero. So, so we have that, that cancels out. Now we're just left with, here this equals to limit as t approaches one from the left side of ln, absolute value of t minus one. And now to get rid of this absolute value, recall that as you approach one from the left side, basically what happens is t minus one, or let's say as t approaches one from the left side, then this means is that the left side is, um, let's say it's gonna be smaller than one. So this, what this means is, I'll say then, t minus one approaches, well, you're approaching zero because you're gonna have one minus one is zero, but it's from the left side. So for example, 0 0.9 minus one, that's negative 0.1. So it's approaching zero from the left side. This means that t minus one is, well, less than zero. But this is absolute value. So we need to make it positive to get rid of this. So what that means is we could, well, put that back up here. This just equals to limit as t approaches one from the left side ln and then just flip these around, one minus t. So that this is always gonna be, now it's gonna approach zero from the right side. So, yeah, so what happens now is one minus t is approaching zero from the right side now, because we flipped it uh, as t is approaching one, uh, yeah, as t is approaching one from the left side. So we're getting a ln, or in other words, we're gonna have a, uh, ln zero plus, so that's where it's approaching. So it's approaching zero plus as t is approaching one from the right side. So now we have to find out ln of zero. This is actually going to negative infinity. And yeah, just to re recall how the graph of ln looks like, if you aren't familiar or just, just need a reminder. So this x, y, the, the graph of ln or natural log looks something like this, where zero is a vertical asymptote right here. So y equals ln of x. And then as you can see here, it's approaching, well, uh, approaching negative infinity as, as you approach zero from the right side. So as you approach zero, you're basically going negative infinity. So this means now that, well, this limit is approaching negative infinity. And I'll just, I'll just write that all together. Yeah, so basically now what that means is the integral from zero to one of dx x minus one is approaching, well, it's negative infinity. This means that this is divergent, so we can't get the integral of it. So if this is divergent, so this is the first part, then we don't even need to, uh, so we don't need, yeah, so we don't need to evaluate the second part, which is one to three of, dx x minus one. So we don't have to evaluate it because we already have this going to negative infinity. So negative infinity plus or minus whatever this number is, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna get a divergent limit does not exist. And now this brings us to that warning I made uh, initially. Basically, if we had not noticed that the asymptote x equals one, if, if we did not notice this asymptote line and had instead confused the integral with an ordinary integral instead of an improper uh, integral of type two, then we might have made the following erroneous calculation or wrong calculation. So if we didn't notice it, we, if we just solved this zero to three dx, x minus one, if we just evaluated this, this would be ln x minus one 
from zero to three. This equals two. When you plug in three right here, we have ln absolute value three minus one, which equals to two, and then minus ln, and then put the zero in, zero minus one, that's negative one. So in this one, absolute value of two is just two, so this equals to ln two, and absolute value of negative one is just, well, one, so ln one. And then this just goes to zero right here. So this equals to ln two. So we would have got an answer of ln, I was right a bit neater. So we would have got an answer of ln two, which is wrong. And here I just wanted to state this now again. So this is wrong again because the integral is improper and must be calculated in terms of limits. And now a last note is basically thus it is important to first look at the function being integrated and decide if the integral is proper or improper on the interval it is being integrated on. In this case, zero to three, that's improper because we have a, a asymptote that x equals to one. So always make sure you think of this whenever you're integrating any function, especially if you have an, if you have an exam, et cetera. Teacher might put in a trick question like that. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you learned. And like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.